people forget that the spine is water. You know what I mean? It's like, I think the discs are 75% water. Mm. So it's like, if you're not drinking water, you know, what do you expect? Like some people don't drink water. Yep. And it's like, they think their back's going to be okay. Good as gold, the official Gold's Gym Australia podcast. Welcome back to another episode of the Good as Gold podcast. We are your hosts, M and Cal, and boy, do we have an episode for you. We do. We have the fine gentleman from Corrective Culture, Jake and Cal. We're going to be touching on corrective posture, mm-hmm. looking at how simple things are to fix in your day-to-day life to mm-hmm. help assist in, in correcting uh, not just the way that your body you know, looks, but the way it feels as well. So Totally. We talk about the fungal cleansers that they do, the parasite cleansers that they, they offer, and boy, there's some juiciness in this episode. Yeah, let's head into it. Proudly supported by Raw Energy, cafe partner for Gold's Gym Australia. I was about to say welcome back again. <laughs> God damn. Okay, I'm going. We got the boys here from Corrective Culture, Jake and Cal. How are you boys? Good, man. Good. It's very well. It's Friday, so we're always happy on a Friday. <laughs> Honestly, always happy on a Friday. What did you guys get up to this morning? <laughs> what did you do? Um, I went and had a coffee, and then I went and surfed out at uh, Kiwana. Oh, my nice. It was my day off today, so I was just like cruising. I didn't purposely didn't book anyone in so I could have nice. some, some me time, you know? Me time. Intentional. I like it. Yeah, that's really mm. nice. Cal, what did you do? I um I got the sunrise and then I had uh, four four clients this morning, so eight till twelve, and just had a girl come in with the SI joint thing. What else? Um and yeah, SI joint back pain. It's always back pain, mm. pretty well. Mm. Yeah, SI yeah, it was good. It was good. It was interesting. She got better by the time she walked out, so she was pretty happy. That's the goal. That, that is, is the goal. Yeah. That's what you want. Yeah. Yeah. So and, um, no. is your mister still dealing with the SI joint stuff? SI, oh, well, I'm going to get into that. I cannot wait to talk because this is where I want to yeah. not necessarily go, but I want to talk about injuries and, and common injuries. But before we go too mm-hmm. far into that, um, we know a little bit about you and what corrective culture is, but for the people at home who have no idea, what is corrective <laughs> culture? What is like kind of the ethos behind what you boys do? Um, and then we'll elaborate. Tell us. Yeah, I think it's um like kind of derived from um Czech. So Paul Czech's the founder of the Czech Institute, and um oh, I've been studying that for nearly on ten years. And right. then we I met Cal and we we'll just and Cal just went nuts on it and just started studying like crazy. And then we we're just like, fuck, we should start something. Mm. So I guess like it's a. I mean, we've studied a bunch of different stuff too. It's not just Czech. We've kind of branched off in our own little things and stuff like that. But yep. for the most part, it based around being Czech practitioners. Yep. Yeah, it's like a good base. The mm. Czech stuff's a really good base for a, it's, it gives you more of a way of thinking instead mm. of like this for that model. Yep. Mm. Um, and based on holistic health really. So, you know, on, on all the foundations of your food, your water, your sleep. And if anyone's got any symptom and they're lacking in any of those foundations, our job and that person's job really is to look at and just be honest with themselves really of um, mm. how, how they've – manifested that pain yep what are what yep. are the foundations of check like is like you're saying there are like blocks to that is that the totem or is that a completely yeah. different thing well the, there's a to- well the totem pole is more just like a, a rehab conceptual it's all just conceptual truth right so the totem pole is just like a rehab principle of like okay if someone's got knee pain mm-hmm. make sure you look at all these other things first before you bother with the knee yeah like you know someone's someone's breathing is off right Say if they got a restriction in the rib cage and they're breathing, and they, they may lean in a certain way to open that up. So they may lean over that leg, right? Or plus you're breathing, mm. right? You're, yep. you're dead without it. That's how important mm. it is. Mm. And then, you know, if their head's forward, then the hips will shift underneath that. That'll shear on the knee, shear on yep. the patella. So a forward head could be driving things. But basically, don't go chasing the symptom. You know what I mean? You still mm. got to fix a person. And if they're inflamed, yep. they're just eating shit all the time they'll never, their back pain will never go away, you yeah. know, because they're inflamed. Mm. Yeah. So they have to just be from all angles. And that's the missing link, I reckon, in a lot of it is, is I believe the food and the water is a huge thing. Yeah. Like, these people forget that the spine is water. You know what I mean? It's like, I think the discs are 75% water. Mm. Yeah, wow. So it's like, if you're not drinking water, you know, what do you expect? Like, some people don't drink water. Yeah. And it's like, they think the back's going to be okay, you know, yeah. but mm. over the course of years, they'll, they'll pay for that eventually. Yeah. Mm. And organs like take priority over everything as well. 
So the body will shut down everything else to look after healthy organs. Yeah, wow. So if organs are unhealthy, then everything below that's unhealthy. Man, this is actually a good thing on that, right? Mm. So the colon is linked to the TVA, transverse abdominis. Mm-hmm. It's just the same area. Right? Mm. So if you've got bloating, someone's eating shit, I'm not even eating shit. They're just not listening to the signs that their body's telling them. They could be eating broccoli that's bloating them. You know yeah. what I mean? Yeah, yeah. It's just connecting itself. Um, that will that could inflame the colon if they get bloating. It's something's going on, right? The body's telling them something. Then they won't be able to draw their coring because drawing in pushes on the inflamed organ, so it yeah. cause pain. So then they have no core, and then their pelvis falls forward because they have no core, which is going to hold it. And then their hamstring may upregulate, and then the SI joint could fuck up, and all this sort of stuff. You know what I mean? Yeah. yeah. Like, it will back down to the food and the water. It's it's crazy because of how like that you know you talking about it it sounds elaborate but it's realistically quite it makes simple sense. and then we go to our health practitioners and it's like here take this pill and it mm. just like band-aids said problem and then take this one and this one and this one and you're not looking at the crux of well the the foundational mm. issue which is what you boys ultimately I would say specialize in so um, like <clears throat> body correction and also even the, just like I kind know of the gut cleanses and, and the fungal cleanses as well is huge part of um, what I even, mm. I think I first heard about you guys through, um, with mm. those, the cleanses and just how your skin represents so much about your internal health, like your gut biome. Like if you've got any sort of, um, you know, blemishes mm. or yellow eyes or anything like that, you could tell a lot. I'm mm. sure by, if you boys looked at yeah. my complexion, you'd be like this guy. It's pretty good, man. <laughs> no, nah, I appreciate it. Yeah. What about me guys? Yeah. What about me? What about me? <laughs> yeah. I mean, through the screen anyway, but like, it was pretty <laughs> Um, before we do actually start going down that path, I do want to just ask you boys um, a little bit, like give us a little background a- about like how you kind of like fell into this. Have you always been, you know, tip top and into this? Like, ha- have you always been healthy? What What's kind of like your background, both of you? I want the juice. I want the yeah. Real. Give us some juice. I want the juicy story. It sort of starts it for me. So yeah, I don't think um, I was very healthy. So yeah. to be honest, like my mum uh, died of cancer when I was eighteen. Yeah, and she. And she suffered a really horrible death from when I was about 12 to 18. So I saw the, you know, I saw what happens when you're unhealthy, mm. not just like mental, emotionally, but also like what you're eating and, yeah. and things like that. It was such a stress head. And um, yeah, so I just, sorry, what was the question again? It's like, like what, how did you get into this? Oh, yeah, yeah, sorry. <laughs> My mum, so it was f- through fear. Yeah. Basically, yeah, yeah, right. That's yeah. Part of me, I, I was like, surely there has to be something out there. Yeah, it can't be. Well, you can't just you know get cancer, or you can't just get sick and then move on to the next thing. Yeah. You know what I mean? It's like, yeah. So that, that really got that started my health journey. But long story short, it wasn't until I met um, Donald that it all made sense. Like, um, who's a high level chair practitioner? Donald, my back. Donald Carr. Donald Carr. Yeah, I think he's. He's done a few podcasts here on the coast and stuff. Mm. He's really, he's amazing. He just moved up here. But yeah, it wasn't until I met him that it really kicked me on my journey and I had a back problem and um, he kind of fixed it. But what? yeah, definitely like um, I would say fear led me and now now I'm, uh, I understand a lot more. Like you don't just get sick, you know. Yeah. There's a lot of warnings before you get sick. On that back problem, but, like what, what, what started mm. that? Um, bodyboarding. So okay. I used to bodyboard professionally. So I was in just like hyperextension a lot. Um, and I didn't have a good core. I used to eat KFC. I used to eat Coke. Like this is up until I was like 19 too. Like we had cartons of Coke in the fridge, just like, yeah, yeah, it was just, um, so yeah, it was, it was bodyboarding, I reckon. And over, over, I was in Hawaii and I I had kind of like a wipeout of pipe and it just landed on my, landed on my back a little bit. And I think that was like the final straw. Yeah. And then I saw like Cairo's physios for two years. I could hardly sleep. Um, like if you know if you know the injury, it's called a spondylolisthesis, which is when like that L five actually slips forward off the sacrum, Ooh. and you know a, a significant amount is is twenty five percent, but mine was over fifty percent. So it's it was like a really forward slippage, and it can put pressure on the spinal cord and the spinal nerves and stuff like that. So, so it was quite quite painful. Okay. And the only thing I saw a low back specialist, everyone just told me they wanted to fuse my spine. Yeah. Um, mm-hmm. And then I, re- I really thought like, all right, I'll give this one last thing a go, this check stuff a go, and I'll commit to it fully. And, um, yeah, within two and a half weeks, I noticed the pain went from like 100% pain. Like I was probably eight or nine out of ten in pain mm. yeah. to down like a two. Wow. So, right. yeah, I just became like a crazy Christian like, and I was just like, 
bumping people with a bible. Like. <laughs> <laughs> it healed me. Yeah, yeah. literally. Yeah. And now you preach but it. But I think that's that's so cool, Cal. We're going to get into your background too. But Jake, that's so cool that like, you know, you you found something that worked and you went hard into it. Yeah. And then like, because you actually truly believe that it, it worked, you're like now living and yeah. literally breathing exactly. and doing what I guess Donald did for you in a sense, right? Like he helped you, you found that. And as well, I'm sure you did a lot of your own hard work. It wasn't just all someone else. Mm. Um, yeah, I think I think it's a. It was it, for me. It was a physical journey. Like I wanted my body to be to look good at the start too. Like once I got out of pain, I wanted my body to look yeah, yeah. you know good yeah, aesthetically. And then I was yeah yeah aesthetically. And then I was like it kind of. I went down to do HLC with Paul Check for seven days, and I realized that like the body doesn't really mean too much. It's like about how you feel inside your body. Yeah. And um, I went whole mental emotional. Uh, like healing process, which mm. was just so rewarding and seeing so many clients like me and Kelsey, quite a few clients now and just seeing everyone have live their journey and, and um, get better. And you, we often say like, it's weird. We'll be changing the body and they just quit their job randomly and go and do a completely different thing in life. It's like, there's no, you know, there's no coincidence that that stuff yes. happens. Yeah. Agreed. Mm. Yeah. That's epic. And, and yeah. Cal, your background, go as juicy as you want as well. I think it's pretty cool. Yeah. Story. Yeah. It's amazing. Yeah. So I guess like I was always into movement. My actually first intro to movement besides like school footy and that was like CrossFit, just funny, right? <laughs> now it's like, <laughs> now I, I wouldn't really, uh, I recommend that so highly, you know, but I used to think I wanted to open a CrossFit gym. So I got to experience that. Did it for five years and, um, and I got injured. I got hurt my shoulder, hurt my lower back doing a deadlift. Mm. Um, just, I wasn't connected to my body. I was, yeah. and that's, that's the thing. This is the whole goal of the check stuff, man. It's about realizing that your body's wisdom is telling you so much, mm. like at all times from like being thirsty for going to the toilet, for going for a walk, for having sleep instead of coffee, for not doing that, doing this instead, like all the time. Yeah. And this is where like, it's about trying to, how good can you listen to that really, you know? And for this food, if it bloats me, like I get girls that bloat off fucking gluten and then they get a test and tell them they can have gluten, but they're not intolerant. But every time they eat gluten, they bloat. So they're talking, they're caring about this test, you know what I mean? Instead yeah. of what the body's telling yeah, them. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And it's just like with everything, it's about doing that. And it's hard. It's hard work. Like it takes, I'm still getting better at it. Like I just found out the other day, beetroot makes me feel like shit. I didn't know that. <laughs> you know what I mean? And I, I had beetroot and then my face was all like sort of super tired the next day. But most people wouldn't realize that. They just think that I was super tired. Yeah. But I know that's rare for me. Yeah. And then I know that happened off something else that has lectins in it. So I'm like, all right, I can stay away from that. Mm. Back to the path anyway. Um, <laughs> so, yeah, that got me into movement. But honestly, my dad was into this stuff called Feldenkrais and still is. And Feldenkrais is it's Moshe Feldenkrais. And the whole slogan behind that is awareness through movement. So my whole life, like, honestly, so, so from when I was born, was like he wouldn't let us. He was into infant development, made sure we crawled. Did all these, yeah. you know, didn't let us know Jolly Jumper, all those sort of things. Yeah. Um, he'd, he'd constantly talk, like, look at people's posture. How many ways can you stand up? Can you spiral? How can you spin? Like, all this random shit that yeah. I just ignored, you know? I didn't give a fuck about it, right? Yeah. But it must have imprinted on me somehow, you know? Because yeah. it's the way I look yeah. at people now, too. Um, and then, but I didn't have the avenue because I, I was sort of like thinking, like I want to be like maybe a physio or something like that. Yeah. But then I was, I, I don't want to go to uni. I, it just didn't excite me. And plus the, like, I, I didn't want to take people's backs. I didn't want to do this. And it, it just bored me a little bit. Yeah. And I went to a physio mm. from my shoulder. And this is the recommended skill. was like done it for 28 years or something. And then now that I know what I know, it's like, she gave me nothing, told me I was fine. And now I, I knew what it was, right? Yeah. But um, it was just, so, it, I just realized how poor, now I realize how poor the whole sort of the standard of the profession is. And, um, and then when I met Jake, he told me about his back injury, which is a pretty, you know, like seven people told him to fuse his spine or something. You know? yeah. um, and then I was like, why did that work? And why did everything else not work? And then I looked into it. I looked heavy into it. And then I was just hooked, man. I was just like, oh, okay. Yeah. It's about you owning your shit and doing it all yourself. And, and then really just understanding the length tensions of the body and posture and the spine a bit more from a conceptual point of view. Yep. So, like, if, I, if we see someone and the way the check system is, it's like there's a two-hour assessment no matter what, really. And it, the, I think the higher levels go up to, like, a five-, six-hour assessment if you need them to, the vision and the jaw and stuff. But 
you take a range of motion assessment of every major muscle group of the pelvis in the body. You take the range of motion of everything. So you have a folder to refer to of like, okay, this is what's tight. This is what's not tight. Could this be causing this down below? This is what their moving patterns are. This is the way they're lunging. This is the way they're squatting. These are all movements that you need in life. Yep. Um, and it's just so in depth, so in depth. And I was like, okay, this is why. And you learn rapidly when you take all that information because you really start to see patterns of people. Mm. Yeah. And you start to see things that you don't see in books, you know? Yeah. Like you can't, it's like you see like all of a sudden you have 10 people come in with the same thing and then you look at their numbers and there's all these similarities that like this person's hips are always twisted this way and it flares that SI joint or uh, uh, and then you start to see these patterns. Yeah. Uh, and then you, you have a theory behind it and you put it into work and if it works, it works. And, you know, a lot of it, we, you know, it does work. Like mm-hmm. we get some pretty broken people. Like yep. Yeah. The girl this morning, she's seen three years of physios and she walked out with like a significant amount, less amount of pain. And she yep. was like, really, when they walk out, they're hooked. They're like, fuck, all right, I, I mean, get it now. Like, yeah. Yeah. There's, a miss, there's a missing link. <laughs> and then obviously, as you guys know, but they, they don't know, like I, um, when I was younger, I got caught with, I was in partying as I was, and I got caught with a hundred pills. I went to jail for seven months at Woodford in Brisbane. And then lastly at, at um, the farm so i did seven months and um that was where i saw what posture how people treated you with posture so i saw like i walked in just knowing this shit already a little bit with my dad so i walked in with like a puffed up chest and a tall head because we're just gorillas right so yeah. people forget that shit and this is happening everywhere any business meeting everything like all these things happen but i, I had this fake posture that made myself look confident when really yeah. I was scared. Yeah. So that was everyone else, but you know, it's part of the game. And, um, and then I saw a guy coming with poor posture and then he just had all the shit taken off him. Like all the brothers would just take his shit. So, because he was weak and yeah. his posture represents that, you know? Yeah. Um, so I think that's a big thing. And that's where he talks about how you can change the emotions by changing the posture because yeah. you do this. And some people that are here all day long, if they put themselves there, that's a weird feeling for them. Yeah. They don't feel comfortable. Yeah. They want to be back here. Yeah, you know? they feel seen. So you can do all the exercise. But if you do all the exercise and they they still got this mind shit running in their head, yeah. they'll go back in a couple of months. Yeah. Yeah. So, I don't know. I sort of, that's, that's, that's the story really. Yeah. And so, <laughs> you boys landed there. Now, you're doing this, you know, for a living. Mm. You, you're busy. You, you see a lot of people. What are like the mm. common... The common, I mean, do we call them injuries or what are the common yeah, what like, are the symptoms that, symptoms that, that you're you see? always dealing with? And let's go maybe yeah. female and yeah, then female male, male because I'm pretty sure they'd be somewhat different. different. Yeah. Back so, pain, you reckon? Like, yeah. Back, back pain for number one. Sure. Yeah. Back pain and just patterns you see. So mm-hmm. for female, okay, so this morning, right? Standard. It's like I've seen this a hundred times. And this girl, um, lower back just feels so tight all the time. Yeah. And the, around the SI joint area, glute sort of always feels tight. Um, and the lower back's just real compressed and then upper back mid trap tightness. They always complain about that. That creates tension headaches, right? So that's super common and that's a postural thing. So what I found is that the females generally, especially if they're postnatal have too much anterior tilt, mm-hmm. right? Um, if they're too anteriorly tilted, say they've had a baby mm-hmm. and there's weight in the front of their pelvis, that's pulling them down. And we're in the Western world. So we're sitting now, we're not still in tribes, walking, lunging, shit like that, right? So all of a sudden their pelvis will tilt forward. That lower back compresses. Mm. That glute then is really taut. It's actually sort of not tight. It's more taut. And generally you feel the, like the long muscles in, in pain, right? So um, so she feels like she wants to stretch her glutes all the time, but I checked her glutes and they're actually very long, right? And her hamstrings were very long. Mm. And, and then she's been trying to do hamstring stretches and yoga and it would be the worst thing for her. So it was her hip flexors that was driving – this compression in the lower yeah. back, right? And at the same time, just this whole posture yeah. makes all that long. So they're going to feel like it's tight all the time, right? But it really it needs to be, this all needs to be freed up yeah. at the front of their chest because the chest is pulling them down and it's lengthening the back. And um, when the head goes forward, it compresses the, that sort of C7 area. Mm-hmm. There's that orbital nerve that runs, so they'll get headaches with the eye in the front of their head and shit like that. And that's, again, that's like a, it's like a hinge point out there, cervical spine going forward. So, yeah, for the females and males, right, but yep. I find males are generally more tucked under and flat back. This is just a pattern I've seen, mm. right, and, and females are generally more anteriorly tilted. And say if they've worn heels, that hikes their heels, like literally hikes it up, quad loads them. Yep. 
if they're loading the quads and I think of it like a sponge, the quads are contracting all day long. They dry out. Anything that's contracting all day long is going to dry out, right? Because it's not oscillating between on and off. It's mm-hmm. on. Mm-hmm. So it dries out, pulls the pelvis forward, compresses the lower back, shifts their weight forward, loads the calves more, loads the Achilles more. And whatever their – maybe the genetic weakness will be the symptom, but it's still back down to posture. And posture is not about telling someone to stand upright and tall. It's about – retensioning them there and it's just the optimal position of the joint that's yeah. what it is it's not looking nice that comes along for the ride it looks yeah. nice but it's the optimal position of the joint so if you're not doing that what are you doing yeah mm-hmm. are you not bringing the optimal you're trying to strengthen everything without releasing first what's dried and tight and that's i think is a big missing link in the industry is i agree uh, a lot of they don't balance the length tensions first they just yeah. go straight to the strengthening yeah. but the strengthening doesn't work if if the length tensions are tight, if those quads are tight, it's going to lengthen those like, lower abdominals yeah. and they can do all that bullshit they want. Mm. But if they don't release those quads and bring that pelvis back under, that stomach will keep separating. Yep. So that's females. What do you reckon about males? Um, yeah. I mean, I have, we attract completely different clients. Eh? Mm. Like, like definitely what he said is very common as well. Um, I get a lot of, like yesterday I had a guy with um, just depressed shoulders that were below T, your shoulders should line up with T2. And he's were just really depressed. So we just did shrug work and that took all his uh, rib cage pain that he had away. So like, just, I don't know. I get really different kind of clients yeah. that just, um, it's never really, it's funny. Like we did the SI joint course recently in spinal pathology course. And, um, I got people with, you know, that really needed SI joint work. Yeah. So every single client in the last week or two has yeah. been that like, like three, three, three this week. With yeah. SI joint, so. It's just all yeah. SI joint stuff. Even when I was there, one of my clients said, I've just done my SI joint and, I was like, oh, I know what you're doing now. <laughs> what do you think is like super common with the SI joint? Like, um, especially for women more, like, do you see that the SI joint is... So you want to quickly also explain, so sacroiliac joint, if the listener doesn't know what that is, what is it doing with the sacrum? It, yeah, well, it's the, it's a joint that kind of oscillates between when you walk. So it kind of like... They used to think it was just stuck there, but it actually turns like this, mm-hmm. and the the iliac actually goes like this. Mm-hmm. So the the joint can get la- like laxity in between it, or it can get too tight. So that would be an SI joint dysfunction. Yeah, mm-hmm. and um, so with the SI joint, it, it's where the sacrum meets the, the pel- pelvis for the people that they have ilium, which is one half of the pelvis, right? So there is a little bit of motion in that joint. There should be a little bit of motion in that joint, but. Uh, an unstable SI, SI joints hate anterior tilt yeah, because it's all stable because there's slack all in the tissue. So that there should be ligamental tension stabilizing that. But as soon as you're anteriorly tilted, that back gets closer together. So then mm-hmm. there's, there's going to be laxity. There's going to be motion there because yeah. there should be tension. So what actually happens is common for SI joint things is very like you want to make sure the anterior tilt goes. So yeah. you want to make sure that the flexes, the QL, the lower back is released. Um, and they need to strengthen their glutes and their hamstrings to pull it back down. But they also need to make sure the core, the core is really the thing to hold it there. Yeah. Mm. The glutes and the hamstrings just help. And what you'll find is the hamstrings will tighten up and you'll release it and it will tighten back up again, tighten back up again. Because the hamstrings are trying to stabilize the SI joint. So hence why maybe if someone has an SI joint dysfunction and they stretch their hamstrings, they may feel like the pain is worse. Yeah. Same with Jake's degree. It's like almost mm. a similar somewhat approach because yeah, his was a yeah. spondy, right? So his spine has slid forward. Mm. So he needs that, that sort of more level platform. So if he's yeah. anteriorly tilted, mm. falls off. Mm. So same thing for him. He can't stretch his hamstrings, otherwise it brings on pain. Yeah, even rolling him brings on pain. Really? Yeah, because yeah, because I, as soon as I go into anterior tilt, my pelvis is unlocked. Yeah, right. So form and force closure in the pelvis means like form closure is when the uh, joints actually lock together. And then force closures when the muscles lock lock the pelvis together. So if I release my hamstrings, that goes into anterior tilt, and I've got to unlock pelvis, and I can literally feel. I'll grab my back and go, "Oh my god, I feel unstable." Yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. and that's from releasing the hamstrings. Mm-hmm. So it's pretty cool. And yeah. To yeah. even throw more confusion into it, the way I understand it, right, is <laughs> that you said in the very beginning, food and water is key. So say someone has mm-hmm. sacroiliac and their core is meant to be holding everything together, but they're eating something that's making them bloating, which makes their core not work. They need to fix the food, water first before they fix the sacrum. Without a doubt. Definitely. Without man. a doubt. Definitely. <laughs> yeah. And a lot of the time you find they fix the food and the water, you don't have to touch the pelvis. Yeah. Right. So like, way. yeah. So go on to like the core thing of, you know, <laughs> mm. and on that, like you guys do a parasite and gut cleanse, what does that yeah. look like? Jake, you're about to embark on 
a, a cle- cleanse. Like the cleanse is that the parasite mm. cleanse or is that a different? Yeah, so so the cleanse is um is something me and Callan have kind of designed um off Doug Hoffman's work and Ben Greenfield's work and of course Paul Check's work and we've kind of mixed this concoction. Mm-hmm. Um, but it's really like it is a parasite and fungal infection cleanse. So we're made of good and bad, good and bad parasite. Mm-hmm. We are a parasite pretty much. So we need to keep them in balance. <laughs> so a parasite or fungal infection will happen when you're out of balance and you start to get weak. You're a weak organism yep. and fungal parasite will take over kind of thing like that. And so, yeah, would you say? Yeah, they're, yeah. well, they're, they're there to, to break you down and bring you back into the soil, yeah. right, if yeah. you're not living by the root. The thing is they only eat sugar. They all eat sugar, right? So yeah. you got to remember that, like, an apple these days is, like, three times the size of a wild apple. You know what I mean? A banana yeah. is, like, way bigger. So yeah. we all have way too much sugar in our yeah. diet, especially – in winter when you wouldn't really have much sugar at all, so you get a natural parasite plants. Or a lot of these things, are can- it's just a candida thing, right? Yeah. It's candida. But don't think of it as something that you catch that is there, right? But they can, they have to be able to survive inside of you, you know what yeah. I mean? So our cleanse is more, you do have the supplements that sort of kill parasites and then binders that sort of bring it out, but that's such a small part of it. That, mm. just, come, that just feeds it up. Yeah. You've got to change the environment. So that's why it's basically no sugar, no caffeine. And we throw in all these extras to actually reset people, man, because that's some crazy results. Like um, no sugar, no caffeine. I'm having a 10-day break with caffeine at the moment because, fuck, we should every once in a while. Yeah, you know? your, your, adrenals, yeah. your adrenals get fried. Yeah, they get fried. And that's on, and especially for females, especially for females, man. Like Paul talks about if there's a female with any cycle shit going on, first thing is off coffee, caffeine, right? Yeah. And, and I've seen that, right? Um, and that's hard, right? It's called my sister that fuck she. <laughs> yeah. Um, but yeah, the parasite cleanse is also like it's a complete reset of your diet. Yeah. Mm, you, you yeah, like exactly. So much, um, I got a client going through it at the moment and she's and I can tell she's having the symptoms of the parasite cleanse, which is I'm craving sugar, I feel tired, lethargic, what do I do? Mm. And it's not until she finishes the cleanse and she starts to eat, introduce things again, she'll understand why that was happening. Yeah. yeah. She'll start you'll be like, okay, well, that's because I wasn't having enough of this, enough of this, enough of this. You really learn um, to be really intu- intuitive with your body after it. And yeah. when you're adding food back in, it's a complete reset. Yeah. So, so like found, an like oil change girl, of a car. Yeah. yeah. Well, my girlfriend found out cauliflower was making her sick, right? I've had people find out. I had a guy with a disc bulge where garlic was creating the pain. What? So, because it was the same thing. It was inflaming his colon yeah. and he lost the ability. Right? So, so when he, he, he tested it and he ate it again later and it brought on the pain. So, you know, it's like, oh, fuck, basically he's like FODMAP, you know what I mean? Yeah. yeah. Um, and I've, uh, it, it just lets you, because you're so limited, you just know, oh, I'm, I feel like shit today or I feel good today. What was that? And you're really getting like honest with yourself yeah. and it's sort of like a food nation thing while cleaning it out with any heavy metals because it's all the clay and the charcoal. But, man, how's this? Um, so we had someone write in from South Africa recently. <laughs> Never knew him. This wow. is a crazy story. And um, this girl, so it was the boyfriend, but he was writing for her. His girlfriend was sick for like two years, right? Like badly sick. Yep. And she had she had all these tests from all these doctors. She had lesions in her liver. So lots of lesions, like holes in the liver. Yeah. Right? And, uh, and uh, two years of scans and shit. And no doctor could help her. And I think he just follows us because of Jake's bodyboarding thing, right? In South yeah. Africa. Mm. He ended up friends with her. And he said thousands of liver flukes came out of her, right? And him, and him too. He didn't have any symptoms though. And um, and he goes like instantly better. She was told she was going to have cancer in the next couple of years, and she's all her symptoms are gone, right? So it's super. And in the next ten years, you watch. Next ten years, the world will know how big parasites are because Paul's are like this is drilled in the check shit. He goes a lot of people have parasite infections, mm. and what do you? I reckon like thirty percent of my clients, if not sometimes more. Hey, yeah, sometimes definitely. have something come out, liver fluke. Roundworm. I had a guy with a cervical disc injury, and I just put him on it to heal, whether yeah. they got a parasite or not. Yes. They're just eating good food. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh, exactly. Nothing will hurt. So, yeah. So that's why like, I've never had it. I've done it heaps and never had a parasite, but I do it because I save money because I'm eating, I'm cooking all my own food. Yeah, exactly. yeah. I'm having a break off, and I'm just eating. And it's like, nutrient, nutrient dense mind. food, right? Because you just mainly, well, no sugar. Yeah, and you save time. Like you're not going to a cafe, just getting shit done. You yeah. feel like you're just on point. Yeah. And, um, mm. and, Oh, yeah, he had a tapeworm come out. You know what I mean? Yeah. So it's like I had heaps of tapeworms, I had heaps of liver flukes, roundworms. And uh, a, a lady had 20 years of hip pain and had like, I'm talking like this much of that mucoid plaque should come out and it bled. Like, she goes, she nearly went to the hospital. She goes, it bled and came off like my wall. Which, that's what she thinks. And then the next day, like 
this much shit came out. It looked like a kilo, you know? <laughs> and she goes, I felt like she was 16. She goes, I felt like I was 40 again. I thought I was just getting old. So, <laughs> fuck. I mean, I I like, been I've been there for years. I've got goosebumps. I'm like, because oh. I've yeah. also seen, like, you know, psoriasis and skin like topical skin disease get cleaned up as well. Like um, even yeah. like, Through you know, parasite cleanses. Yeah. Like I've seen um, even on your stuff, Cal, like girls that have yeah. got, you know, uh, acne or, or any sort of like, you know, the skin. skin's cl- cleared up. Yeah. The skin's cleaned it. up yeah. completely as well because obviously something is not agreeing in their body, yeah. right? It's fungal, right? Yeah, exactly. It's, it's a stomach thing, right? The skin's breaking out. It's the stomach every time. So they're eating either something that's, Fucking with their guts, right? Mm. The food, or um, or too much sugar, right? And it's just it's feeding off the sugar, right? So you're just starving the stuff, man. And how um, a girl we know, let's say her name, she had UTIs for like how long? Fifteen years or some shit? I don't know. Yeah, like a long time, most of her life, right? And then on the cleanse, she had the worst one of her life. Yeah. And then it, the next day it went away and then she's never had one since. Wow. So I, they're like just screaming and dying and like. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know? And then yeah. the, I don't even know, right? But all I know is that every single one of my clients, I chuck them on if, they, if they're willing to do it. Because yeah. for me, it's going to lower their inflammation, heal their back. I got, I got a guy right now who they wanted to fuse his spine a month ago and he's now surfing, right? And he's done mm. everything, man. He's on bone. Like he lowered his inflammation. And this is, it's not about calories, right? Like. He lost just all this water weight and like his skin got better and shit. Those mm. look like, oh, when I look at someone, I don't really care about their weight so much. That obviously that represents the, the thing, but I'm looking at their the nails, their eyes, if they've got dark circles under their eyes, like all those little things. That's yeah. what I care about. That's when you know when someone's like glowing, you know? Yeah. yeah and like- also, like they say uh, herpes simplex two is incurable, which is like, um, there's oral herpes and then, you know, the other, other herpes, but the, the mm. cleanse can heal that as well. So that's a systematic virus that sits in the base of your spine, and yeah, it can heal that. It can heal that over six months. So yeah. it's a long cleanse, but it's a. Um, it's actually yeah, I've, I've actually, yeah, I've looked into it, and it's pretty pretty cool. Yeah, like Doug Kaufman's um, fungal cleanse, basically a, a long ca- any long term candida cleanse. You know what I mean? Yeah. yeah. With like heavy thing. Ours is really strict. Yeah, ours yeah. is strict. Yeah. But, it's interesting so it's you like, say that because I um. <laughs> Like I get cold sores like literally under my nose and it's so weird. But I haven't had one in a really – well, I haven't had one in a long time. Touch wood. Touch wood. Let's touch it. But, um, yeah, it is interesting you say that and it's like – because everyone says that you actually can't like cure cold sores, right? Yeah. And these yeah, – Yeah, they say it's a shit. Yeah. Well, I mean, it's the thing. And, and that's why like talking to you boys as well, it's funny because like the stuff you say, it does seem so like – hard to fathom but it's literally so like simple in its form mm-hmm. like you got knee pain look at the look at what else is happening in your body yeah. it's not just don't go and see it and something about your knee or yeah, and like, like just the physical yeah. you throwing around words like fusing like that's a huge to fuse the spine or to fuse like even my wife they got asked her to fuse her sacroiliac joint so her pelvis was to be well to be <laughs> put plates on right that was a possibility to band-aid that's just band something else and yeah. now she doesn't need that she's exactly. like getting better it's still the problem but the doctor was like, we'll just fuse it. How important like, – yeah, it's so wild. How important would you say, um, boys, it is to, like, really care for your body and, like, what are some ways, like, right now that anyone listening can start to, like, work on their body? Water. Water? Okay. <laughs> what are we talking about? Filtered, filtered, yeah, yeah, yeah. pure, four yeah, liters. so, like, a good spring water uh, and then put Celtic sea salt in it or just get a good reverse osmosis thing for your house. Like I think even like um, showering in that in water like that shit. So we're, we've got to change it here as well. But um, yeah, showering in toxic water is bad. Yeah, There's wow. fluoride, chlorine, lead, lots of trace, you know, heavy metals in there. So um, that would be number one because the best the, we are made of water. We're basically like seventy five percent water. Mm. So we need good water to start. Um, that'll especially for women with their hormones mm-hmm. uh, regulated. Uh, and then organic food, like if you're just not, you're not winning if you're not eating organic food. And the studies, you know, the studies are so up and down with it. But like the organics only been a thing since like, you know, the early the early 1900s and before. Yeah. There was no such thing as organic because we were eating organic. We were, yeah, <laughs> yeah that's exactly. the thing. Now they're labeling it organic, but before it was like yeah. it was just the you normal. Were, you're even like your grandparents yeah. were growing shit, you know. Yeah. Now. And and were they were your grandparents' uh, grandparents obese? No. Yeah. 
No, yeah. never. 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 <laughs> well, you even look at those pictures now of like your 1940s and 50s and they're all chilling out on the beach and everyone's yeah. looking schmick and all the kids in the freaking gymnasium <laughs> yeah. are doing calisthenics yeah. and pull-ups and push-ups mm. and strong as shit and now you got... Well, this is where this next question will come anyway. So water, you can... I don't know if we finished yeah. that. Water, f- organic food. Like, Anything yeah, else? I reckon um, for, from a movement perspective, I'm, I'm really, really, really big on, on hydrating your tissue with, with like deep tissue work and firm rolling work and balls and lacrosse balls and things mm-hmm. like that. Mm. I think it's a really underappreciated thing in the industry and I think it's overlooked. And this is like, I've had some crazy, crazy, so was Jake, like, I had a guy on three years of painkillers and they were booking him for hip surgery and he had to get a ball in his glute and he got rid of all his pain. You know, <gasps> that was, so that was a long time. So just fascia and release. Fascia release because it, it'll always pull you. You know, tissue will always pull you somewhere. It won't really push you. There's a couple of scenarios that'll push you, but pretty if you can overview it, it'll always pull you. So if you have like a trigger point, like a like a knot, yeah. it's going to pull everything towards that knot. So it's going to limit your range of motion and you can't stretch that out. Because it's, it's dry. Mm. When it, when it, when under, the, under the skin, it looks dry. Mm. So when you roll it out, it hydrates it and it gives mm. it back its length. It gives this tissue back its standard and it's lymphatic flow. And we had a girl that did that. We got an online um, lumbar curve program, like excessive lumbar curve. And she she had a swollen hand for two years and she wrote in and said her swollen hand's gone. And there's nothing in that program that does the arm really, it does the pec and the rib cage. So there must have been some lymphatic blockage somewhere mm. there. And, and it's like, I don't know how powerful it is because I've went i gone through my entire body. Like, I mean, forearms, behind the ear, like everything. And I don't really have a spot left on me now that's yeah. like painful. Yeah. And everyone everyone um, does, you know. Yeah. So, for, say for Ella with the SI joint thing, man, if they want to fuse it, then that probably means they think it's unstable. Yeah. So, it's moving too much. So, then she should probably be heavily rolling out her hip flexors and her quads because yeah. that's going to make it unstable. But... I w- the rule is for me personally, I don't stretch a muscle unless I hydrate it first. So yeah. if I'm yeah. going to do a quad stretch, I'm not going to stretch it until it's fully broken up. Every trigger point's broken up out of it. Yeah. Because you get 20 degrees, 30 degrees out of it on the spot. Yeah. And then you can stretch. So yeah. It's like it's, stretching, pulling on dry tissue. Yeah. And I think it's, it's a big thing. Yeah. That's really important. I mean, even to like, that's like, I would say even on like that, the macro level of things, whereas like even in the gym, it's like, there's like, if you got shitty form, don't do the movement. Exactly. You don't load. add weight to the you know, you're not gonna Exactly. Add, like, and, but talking like someone listening is like at the gym and like benching and they're only going a quarter way pushing up. It's like, there is no point doing that if you can't even do a push up correctly mm-hmm. yet. Like, baby steps so i think that's it's great like same, like that. yeah same in your in, in in exactly what you're saying it's like start small literally what do you oh you got it sounds like you're about to joke go do you have one no. <laughs> oh I got, i've been itching to ask this Please question do. Oh, thank the lord <laughs> our society so you you brush on it before this western society we we sit in the chair we sit at the office we sit at the couch we sit at home we're sitting 24 7 pretty much and it's Are looking you? it's looking <laughs> it's looking like we're going to be doing that for the near future. Kids are playing games, you know, we're on phones, our heads are tilted forward. What does society say about our posture now and what are things that people could do to break that up? Mm. Um, so I, I just think like once you do enough, like when you work with us, you sort of start to learn a lot of tools that you get to figure out your own body and the things that happen to you, right? So for me, I do jujitsu, which is unnatural, right? So the back of my shoulders will always get tight. If I get a ball in there once a week, I'm pain free. But mm. if I want to do jujitsu and I start doing a couple of weeks of hard rolling, I'll start to get back of shoulder pain because they're getting overworked, right? So I got to get a ball in there, rehydrate it because it's like a contraction, like a sponge. It contracts and pushes all the water out again. So it's unnatural. I should be pulling like a bow, you know. But if I'm doing this, yeah, yeah. I want to do it for like two hours a night, bloody five days a week or something. I've got to have a bit of a routine that that counters that. Same. So right now with sitting, while well, uh, our femur is close to our trunk, so our hip flexors are short. You know, there's, there's fibers of our glute getting stretched, so we need something that's going to contract that glute. We need some – hip flexors, I think, are a big one from sitting. Yeah. You've got to, like, hydrate it because, it, again, all the water's pushing out of it like this. Yeah. yeah. And then, then we stretch it. And then you need – a really good rule of thumb is, like, same with, with training athletes, right? We want to hit that type 1 sort of fiber for endurance fibers, so tonic fibers. Mm-hmm. So you sort of want to get a good – like three minute time and attention when you want to change posture. Yeah. So you can't say if someone like, um, say you want to fix someone's forward shoulders with like a row. I can't give them three sets of 10 at, at like a heavier weight. Yeah. That's, that's not going to have time and attention. They need to have a, a weight that they can hit that good three minutes or at least a minute 
and then they can't rest for longer than 20 or 30 seconds and hit that for three minutes in total, right? Yeah. And it, it, even when you do it, you feel the complete difference. Like you, you drop the weight and it feels like you're being pulled back mm. because that's endurance. It's holding tone. It holds posture all day long. And that's what all my rehab, all long time and attention, all not even really loaded. It's all just like Swiss ball, long time, yeah. boring shit. Yeah. But when you get up, you feel the difference really quickly. Mm. Yeah. If you hydrate it first, you got to hydrate it, make it malleable yeah. so you can set it. And then you set it with something like that. I actually standing- love – oh, sorry, you go, Jake. Oh, just, I just going to say standing feels a lot easier. And yeah. it just so happens like the seated position is the like number one worst position for, for spinal discs as yeah. well. So it's, yeah, just loads. it's making me, yeah. <laughs> like, <laughs> I've like got my legs crisscross my Cause chest. Even that, hey, sit up straight. <laughs> even that the, the forward head is, is mm. a huge thing because like the further forward we go, gravity's pushing down, putting like weight and that's where like that tension in the neck comes from. And I know you boys released a program recently of that forward head posture, and you see so many people like walking around getting calluses like formed, you know, calcium yeah. forms on the back to hold it. Yeah, There's always that one little lady who's like at the shops that like. <laughs> yeah. I actually. What, what can people do to reset that? Like, get on a foam roller and just lay there, like. Spread so, out. Yeah, that's that's a that's an option, right? Like, if you're just laying on the ground, where well, your head's not forward on the ground, you know what I mean? Yeah. So. If you're on a flat ground, it's, it's, there's a subtle stretch going on, but you'd have to lay there for a good 10 minutes. <laughs> you just got to look at, if you think of the body as a cobweb, one big cobweb, this is what I really want to teach the world, like one huge cobweb. You got to look at where's short on that cobweb. So you don't need to know anatomy like I do, but like the average person doesn't need to know it. Yeah. So if someone's head's forward, right, they're being pulled forward. So all this tissue in front of the neck, sternum, chest needs to be released. Mm. So the hip flexors have a fascial, like the quads have a fascial connection to the to the abdominals. Mm. So again, if those hip flexors are tight, it sort of pulls, 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 pulls it down. And especially those SCMs, those two thick cords to the side of the neck, they'll actually hyperextend the neck and pull it forward. And then you got to think at the back then is all short. So you need to take a ball, like a big thick ball or a roller or something to those suboccipitals at the base of the skull and the neck. So you get the base of the skull, you get in front of it, and then you need to do something that activates it. And mm-hmm. a really good rule of thumb is just bring your head where you want when you do every exercise, when you do a push-up, when you do everything. Yeah. Like train your posture. Into your yeah. So a really good concept is train your posture into your movement. Put yourself in the posture you want to be. Oh, okay. Susie never gets a good tip of um, imagining holding a tennis ball between your chin and your sternum yeah. like this. And that's like, activate those deep flexes. And that would be like true neutral spine then, right? A lot of people talk about, you know, like, yeah. oh, in yeah. a bent over row, be a neutral spine, but their head's like, this but their spine's neutral but their head's forward tucking that yeah. in would technically then give you yeah, that and, that, and that's why mirrors are so important like everyone should work out with a mirror in front of them so they can see what's yeah, exactly. actually going on yeah it's exactly. not about vanity it's like literally checking yeah. like you can look one, at yourself a bit of both and if you, if you don't have a mirror how, you know film yourself because <laughs> yeah. if it looks if it looks ugly it is ugly and yeah that's exactly just like, if you want muscles to co-contract together and, and your body to work in perfect form you need to sit, you need to look good it needs to look fluent mm. yeah like I, I try and sh- obviously you can't in most gyms but i train without a shirt on as much as i can yeah, because exactly. i'm like i'm in pointing my oblique line and my chin mm. over my like yeah. that's how accurate i want to be mm. and it's like it's sort I of love that. once oh, you start yeah. doing that like it's hard to look at a shirt you can't see shit through the shirt yeah so that's a that's a big thing yeah people- jan, jan would get people in their undies like this chick that i did a traineeship through she would just she's like in your undies so i need to see you. <laughs> yeah so, yeah yeah that <laughs> that's a rule in the gym now. Well, that's even like <laughs> <laughs> in the dojo, just in the jocks. I love um, yeah, yeah, yeah. I love that you said, Cal, before you're like, it's boring shit. Like sometimes it's just boring shit that you're doing that you, you need to do but and that you need to yeah. like actually put in the time and effort. Is that something that you're really big on? Like it, like doing the boring shit basically? Yeah, treat it like servicing a car, like you're servicing your body. I, every yeah. Wednesday I do it to my body. So every Wednesday because we don't work Wednesdays. So I go in and I, I roll out. I do the stability stuff. I look at my body. I try and unwind things. Mm. I make always balance your left and your right side. So if one side's tighter than the other, I'll correct that. So I yeah. won't stretch it evenly ever unless they need to be stretched evenly. So if the left pec's tighter, I go left, right, left pec stretch. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, that's the best thing about um, the deep tissue stuff is like tr- giving people a tool to be intuitive with their body. Like yeah. you say, hey. Do, do one side and if it doesn't feel bad, don't do it. Do mm. the other side that feels bad because yeah. it's, it, it, your body just is a, it just tells you it's a gift. Yeah, symmetry. Mm. Yeah, so definitely that boring shit. It's, it's, 
It's um, it's it you just feel so good when you walk out of there. Like when you do it and you learn it and you learn how to, you need someone like guiding you a little bit. You know, it took me a while, you know, but once you do it enough yourself, you really start to connect. And I've learned so much on my own body. Like I've learned heaps on my own body and seeing it's like, okay, if I had a little twist, if I tried this, does it take the twist out, you know? Yeah. And then if it does, cool. And I release one thing and check, one thing and check. So I know, okay, that muscle yeah. has an action on it. Mm-hmm. And I tell my clients to do the same thing so they're empowered. Instead of doing that whole pelvis, I like they, if say they got a hip impingement, I'll say release this and let's see. And if it doesn't fix it, cool, release this and let's see. Yeah. Yeah. And then they find one that fixes it. But if we did the whole thing, then we wouldn't know what one to direct at if they were short on time, mm. and, you know, later on in the years. Mm. So it's cool. It's really empowering. The goal is to teach the client and empower them. And like I think about literally breaking them back down with tissue work, mm-hmm. doing specific stretches that they need from the assessment then setting them with static sort of long time and attention holds and then unwinding any rotational imbalances and then ingraining the lunge, twist, push, pull, bend, all movement patterns because every once you learn them, every motion is just that. If I throw a ball, it's a lunge, twist and a push. Mm. So it's all that sort of stuff. Once you know how to do it all individually, you can tie them together and then you know how to move functionally and it's a life process. I'm still working out my stuff. But, you know, I've done... I did CrossFit for five years. I've done mm. MMA for mm. like four, five, five years. I've done jiu-jitsu for 10 years. I scaffolded for 10 years and I got no pain, you know? Mm. Yeah. So I want to be the example of that. Yeah. And if if people listening to this episode, you know, aren't on the coast where you guys are, what what's their next best bet? Yeah, probably our online programs. Yeah. To be honest, I don't even know who to refer to. Cause yeah. I don't, unless they're like some crew and Goldie, but like I can't. Yeah, even it's like it's like not enough out there, right? They're doing the same thing, you know. It, we, we still made our own little system of it. Like even we own, we both work in our own way. Like every check practitioner has their own like thing. Yeah. Like mm. some one of my sex coaching is a check practitioner. You know? Yeah. <laughs> so it's like it's like everyone's got their thing. Like yeah. so, um, yeah. I love it because you get to be creative and make your own little mm. system. But you still we're all still based off that same base. Yeah. That's the soul. That's most of it, right? Yeah. But it's just what choices we choose for the person i love it damn i've learned a lot I've today learned, yeah even like i know <laughs> i know like some of this stuff but it, it always like just it, i'm so curious uh, afterwards i want to ask like a thousand questions it's about like different things but even yeah. even like being told you know um to drink filtered water it's like something that that i try and do you know every day as a practice absolutely like non-negotiable yeah. but like there are certain times where you know i'll, I'll fill up out of the tap and it's just yeah. like cop some heavy metals literally straight you, in you there you need to do a cleanse twice a year baby yeah I'm yeah. Gonna, yeah yeah like i can't cop tap water at all anymore unless i was forced it's like i just can't do it eh? it's, one, mm. it's like same thing i can't vegetable it's like yeah, I can't go to any cafes that have veggie oil and shit anymore. You know what I mean? It's like, it's hard. It's mm. fucking hard. Once you, it just, you get slowly get better and better and better and your core values get more solidified. Exactly. Yeah. I thought I learned all this shit, but I was still falling off. But I also have a drink once in a while. You know what I mean? Yeah. It's like, don't. You're trying to, yeah, you're doing it like, yeah, 95% because it's like, I saw a meme yeah. the other day and it was like walking into a grocery store and like, reading the back of a label and you're just like seeing all these numbers you're like yeah. put it down you're like all right well i'm not eating that i'm just gonna go home and have my steak like <laughs> yeah, yeah yeah and yeah, even yeah. that it's like there's so much in that but i think the takeaways from this that i've got like people listening that if they are i would say experience any pain discomfort or if they've been doing the chasing the tail of physio doctor mm. Cairo, um there are options out there and like you boys offer a great service. Yeah. Um, and I believe that there is more knowledge than just the knowledge of the standard, the stock standard, like mm. the, the car is like, yeah, yeah. your back's, yeah, exactly. your back's cooked brother. Yeah. Like, so you know, they they be, yeah, they, they can be amazing. Like when you need oh, to refer, yeah. refer like just, um, yeah. Like the whole picture is just such a big thing. Like, yeah, it's nearly like, get curious. Yeah. Yeah. You're not looking at the whole picture. It's yeah. kind of like, well, fuck. <laughs> sort of like unplugging from the matrix. Once you see it, you can't see it. And it's yeah. like, there's no going back. It's like, yeah. I can see it in you, Cal. You know what I mean? It's like, you sort of know it. And it's like, you I feel like one day you probably fucking do the check course or something because I feel like you'd love it. Because <laughs> oh, it's like, like, almost like a superpower amongst the other shit. Like, yeah. it's, it's easy to see out. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I, do, I do love it. And I think as well for like a lot of, you know, when you think about bodybuilding or you think about gyms and you think about people doing movements and they're, they're so hyper-focused on looking a certain way to try and chase that good feeling mm. where like 
simple things like are you sleeping enough are you drinking enough water are you fi- like fueling your body with the right stuff mm. but also like i mean i'm guilty some days i go in and do a workout like a, an hour and a bit of like power lifting intense squats mm. you know deadlifts where i'm putting so much attention mm. in it, and then i'm like oh five minutes left to stretch but i've worked out for yeah. an hour and a half and i'm yeah. only giving myself five minutes like i need yeah, oh, i know yeah. i need to like, like catching yourself out in those yeah and then and moments. i've like my i feel as though my adhd nature is like i'm lying on the ball and i'm stretching out I'm like this is good this feels good and i'm like mm-hmm. I yeah but this go. is when I'm you gotta leave. meditate yeah, this is where i gotta and then i gotta, gotta go so i know we've really i think got to take a focus on stretching there's yeah. no one ever in the stretching area at my gym there's yeah. everywhere they're throwing a wet round weights like mm. putting biscuits on everything they- no one's stretching. Take the focus on take the focus on foam rolling first, bro. Think hydrate your tissue first, then then focus on your stretching. But I'd I'd recommend cleaning out your whole body. Like and I mean bone deep. I don't mean some soft blue roller. I mean yeah. like deep work, real deep work and, and unwinding that. Like what I actually tell people is do a stretch. Say do a hip flexor stretch, like a, a couch stretch. Put a finger on where it feels super tight, mm. then go take the ball there for two to five minutes yep. and, and move it a little bit move a little bit and try and activate the quad a little bit by like bending your knee or something yeah. and then go back to your stretch and then you'll understand how much better it feels yeah. and yeah. then you can but I keep using the stretch to feel because you'll feel the next kink in the cobweb then because yeah. yeah. you'll feel somewhere else yeah. keep chasing it and once you chase it to the joint and you feel like it's sort of gone then you can give it that good you know 30 second stretch three, three times 30 seconds and that's that's it's fun it's really empowering well, boys, what a little <laughs> dream of a chat. Mm, are you going to ask the big, the big question? I'm going to ask a couple of questions. Yeah, we have a little fast five. Um, basically, you can't think. You just have to do. You have to do it. And okay, you go quick, go first. <laughs> first one is guilty pleasure. Um, cacao, hot chocolate. <laughs> mm-hmm. Or red wine. Yeah. Or oh, red wine, yeah. Red wine, yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, mine would be uh, weed, marijuana, which I'm not really smoking lately, but that's definitely my guilty pleasure. Interesting. Yeah. 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 Um, sunrise or sunset? Sunrise. Sunrise. Karaoke song. Mm, zombie. Yes, lately, I've been good tune. Up. What's that song? All I Need by Radiohead. I've been banging that lately. That's mm-hmm. pretty good. <laughs> mm-hmm. I love that. Uh, <laughs> favorite food. Actually, no. Let's go. Not favorite food. All right, you can only eat one food for the rest of your life. What would that food be? Oh, steak. But um, <laughs> one food for the rest of my life. Jeez. I, mean, I know I shouldn't be thinking about this, hey. Probably, I mean, it has to be It has to be a red meat, I guess. Yeah, I guess steak, hey. <laughs> I'll get over it after a few days. Though, yeah, it but, honestly, it hurts oh, yeah. me to think about eating steak, breakfast, lunch, and dinner for the rest of my life. I do love a good burger. I love a good burger. Like mm. a good brisket burger. With, actually, mm. no, a brisket burger. Brisket burger. Yeah, I, that's, yeah you've yeah. sold me on that. If you could live anywhere in the world, where would it be? Right here. Yeah. Ooh. This is the dream. Yeah, right. To be honest, here. Mm. Like, I, I want to travel everywhere, but here just purely because we have some of the best food in the mm. world and when you travel around and you start to feel that the food's not the same quality i feel it in my body yeah um good cheap organic food what more do you want mm. you know what i mean and home is a feeling so yeah Ooh. i'm home wherever i am I <laughs> oh, you've hit the heartstrings. that was <laughs> if i got one last one hit it's, it it's a big one though. i love it and it's more than one word um <laughs> the, the world is listening for a minute what would you tell them if the whole world was listening and tuning into you boys what would you say what what's it, your advice I just love yourself. Yeah. Work on, find a way to love yourself and look at yourself like honestly in the mirror and, and love yourself. Um, and one that helped me, he's, I've said it before on potties is, is let, I heard it on Paul podcast, like let your heart be your compass, mm. which that ch- actually changed my life. Cause mm. when you realize that the heart is, is the compass and what, what made me change my career was hearing that and then thinking about me doing check as a job, and then my heart like lit up. Yeah. So I was like, oh, like, that's it. And I thought about all those other things, but I was honestly like a beacon that went buzz. So that's it with everything though. Like yeah. every decision, taking the choice, like you guys move in a new space, but we move into a new space. Yeah. Like let your heart be a compass and, and really listen to that and stay out of your mind a bit because your heart will tell you. Yeah. Yeah. That's, there's nothing better than that. It's so true. Literally. Oh Love my that. God. It's like Captain Jack Sparrow's compass. <laughs> but yeah. 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 Deep in here. Deep and what, does your, what does your heart feel like? Like, what does your heart feel like when it gives you a yes? Yeah, yeah, literally. Oh, it's been a little treat. Boys, where can everyone find you if they want to know more 
if they need a cleanse, if they want to do some online or even face-to-face work? Um, yeah, our Instagram, Instagram at our website. Instagram. We've got a website, correctiveculture.com. Uh, and, yeah, our Instagram, you can DM either myself or Callan to work with us. And, yeah. yeah. We're sort of like we get – we get to the DMs about once a week. <laughs> yeah. We've got to get better at that. No, yeah. do you know what? Just, do you though? Like that's the thing. Maybe, we, we're maybe allowed boundaries. Day. Yeah, maybe absolutely. Your checking DMs day, you know? Yeah, you get people that write in and say, how do I fix this? <laughs> you know? Yeah. It's like, yeah, no you're like, oh. Them. Like, yeah. Yeah. yeah, so it's mm-hmm. like, but it's cool. But yeah, yeah, Correct to Culture Instagram. And we have a podcast, Correct to Culture podcast, for people that want to listen to us talking about this sort of shit all the time. Yeah, yeah epic. literally. Okay, well, uh, thanks for joining us today, boys, Thank and you, have lads. a good day. Yeah. Yeah. Enjoy the afternoon. Thank you Enjoy for having us. Happy Thank Friday. You. you. Thank you. Damn. Wow. That was full on. Seriously, there's so many key takeaways I took. First one is hitting the water hard and it, making sure that it's filtered. I feel like the, the boys, and, and you hear it all the time, right? We read it, we see it. The, just how important filtered water is, but it's just that reminder that I I needed to be honest to just be yeah. like, yeah, make sure that it, we, we're getting that filtered water in. Also, I love the way that he can, he uh, Cal spoke about how our body is like you know it's a like a spider web. It is all connected, and mm. we know that, and we always hear about it. And it's not as simple as like oh, I've got a sore knee. It's like actually check your ankle, check your quad, check your muscles around that. Even just like the whole you know, rolling out thing. Yeah. It makes so much sense. Like if you've got dry muscles and, or even like a, you're, you're dehydrated, of course yeah. your back's going to be tight. Exactly. It's not lubed up. It's like it all, yeah, it literally all makes sense, doesn't it? And it's like we, we as humans, we need to respect and love our, our home, which is our, our body, you yeah. know, it's, we only get one. So it's like, let's actually put that time and effort into yeah. our body. I've got a new ethos. What is it? I just want a long life. Yeah. And, and a, Really, a good really one. good body. Like as in just a really a nice body that's gonna be kind a, do you drink of enough water? I do. You do? Yeah. Three liters? Hundred percent. Yeah, every day. Yeah. I, I would say there's been times where I haven't. Yeah. But yeah, it's it's a massive that is the one thing that I try and do every day that have, is a practice. I've started in the morning now making sure I polish off that bottle before I leave for work that is good so I know I've got like a a good 900 mil down me yeah and then honestly it it gets easier because like what it's like 7am and you've already drunk nearly a litre of water and you've got two to go a quarter of what I needed to have had yeah it's good stuff Um, but yes we hope you get so much out of this once again like, comment, subscribe, share it around. Give us Give some it love. That big five star rating <laughs> for all of those at home. But we'll tune in for the next episode. Yes. With you. Farewell. Peace. Good as gold. Gouda as older. <laughs>